In 2024, FHA loans continue to offer a pathway to homeownership for those with less than perfect credit scores or limited savings for a down payment. Here's a comprehensive overview of the latest FHA loan requirements. When considering an FHA loan in 2024, two key factors come into play, your credit score and the down payment required. Let's break these down simply. First off, your credit score essentially acts as a gateway to qualifying for an FHA loan. If your score is 500 or higher, you're in the game, but there's a catch. With a credit score between 500 and 579, the FHA says, sure, we can work with you, but we're going to need a little more skin in the game, meaning you'll need to put down a 10% down payment. It's their way of balancing the risk. Now, if your credit score is sitting pretty at 580 or above, things get a bit easier. The FHA rewards this higher credit score by requiring a lower down payment, just 3.5% of the home's purchase price. It's a significant incentive, making homeownership more accessible to a wider range of people, especially those who might not have a hefty savings account but maintain a good credit score. So, in a nutshell, the FHA loan program is designed to make homeownership achievable for more Americans, including those who are rebounding from financial difficulties or who are stepping into the home buying arena for the first time. With these credit score and down payment requirements, the FHA is extending a helping hand, saying, we believe in giving you a chance to own a home, but let's work together to make it happen responsibly. These guidelines reflect the FHA's efforts to accommodate a range of financial situations, providing a path to homeownership that balances the borrower's creditworthiness with a realistic down payment expectation. Imagine you're taking out an FHA loan for your new home. Along with the usual costs, you'll also need to consider what's known as mortgage insurance premiums, or MIP for short. Let's talk about how these work because they're a bit different from other types of mortgage insurance. First up, there's the upfront MIP. This is a one-time fee that's 1.75% of your total loan amount. Think of it as part of the cost of getting the loan. You can pay this upfront at closing, or you can roll it into your loan amount so you pay it off over time. For example, if your loan amount is $200,000, your upfront MIP would be $3,500. Now, there's also an annual MIP, which is more like a recurring fee. Typically, this is about 0.55% of your loan amount each year, and it's split into 12 monthly payments that get tacked onto your regular mortgage payment. So, on that same $200,000 loan, the annual MIP would add about $1,100 to your yearly mortgage costs, or roughly $91.67 per month. Here's where it gets a bit hopeful. For most borrowers, this annual MIP sticks with you for the life of the loan. It's like a long-term insurance policy that makes sure the lender is protected in case things go south. But, if you're able to put down 10% or more as your down payment, there's a silver lining. In that case, you can say goodbye to the annual MIP after 11 years, which can save you a significant amount over the life of your loan. So, while these insurance premiums might seem like just another thing to pay, they're actually what allow the FHA to offer loans to a broader range of home buyers, including those who might not have a huge down payment saved up or have a perfect credit score. When you're applying for an FHA loan, one of the key numbers lenders will look at is your debt-to-income ratio, or DTI for short. This is a percentage that shows how much of your monthly income goes towards paying off debts. Here's how it breaks down. Ideally, your DTI should be 50% or less. That means if you make $4,000 a month, the FHA prefers that no more than $2,000 of that goes towards debt payments. This can include your new mortgage, car loans, credit card payments, and any other monthly debts you have. Now, the FHA sets a general standard that your DTI shouldn't be higher than 43% to get approved for a loan. But life isn't always so neat and tidy, right? Sometimes your DTI might be higher, maybe up to 50% or even a bit more. The FHA knows this, and they're willing to be flexible under certain conditions. 
For instance, if you have a good chunk of money saved up in the bank, or if you can make a larger down payment on your home, they might say, okay, we can work with that and approve you even with a higher DTI. So, think of your DTI as a snapshot of your financial health in the eyes of lenders. A lower DTI shows you're not overly burdened by debt and can comfortably take on a mortgage. But even if your DTI is on the higher side, don't lose hope. The FHA is all about making homeownership accessible, and they're willing to look at the bigger picture of your finances to help make that happen. When looking into FHA loans for 2024, it's important to understand that there's a cap on how much you can borrow, and this cap, or loan limit, varies depending on where you're planning to buy a house. The FHA sets these limits to reflect the cost of living and the average price of housing in different areas across the country. For most areas, the loan limits for FHA loans in 2024 start at $498,257. This is the baseline, meaning it's the minimum amount you can borrow under an FHA loan in many parts of the United States. However, if you're eyeing a home in a more expensive market, the FHA acknowledges that the baseline might not cut it. That's where the higher cap of $1,149,825 comes into play. This upper limit is designed for high-cost areas, where the real estate market is significantly pricier than the national average. Now, if you're looking in exceptionally high-cost areas, such as certain parts of Alaska, Hawaii, Guam, and the U.S. Virgin Islands, you'll find that the FHA loan limits can jump even higher. This adjustment is due to even higher construction and living costs in these locations. What does this mean for you as a home buyer? Essentially, the FHA is setting a borrowing range that aims to accommodate both the average American home buyer and those looking in pricier markets. It's a way to ensure that the FHA loan program can help as many people as possible achieve the dream of homeownership, from those buying modest homes in affordable areas to those purchasing in competitive, high-cost markets. When you're looking into getting an FHA loan for a home, one of the steps you'll need to navigate is the property inspection and appraisal process. This isn't just any lookover of the property, it has to be done by an appraiser who is specifically approved by the FHA. The reason for this appraisal is not just to determine the value of the home, but also to ensure that the property meets the FHA's stringent health, safety, and structural standards. So, what does that mean exactly? Well, for starters, the house needs to have adequate heating, plumbing, and electrical systems. This is about making sure the home is safe and livable. For example, the heating system should be capable of maintaining a comfortable and safe temperature for the house. The plumbing should be in good working order, without any major leaks or issues. And the electrical system needs to be safe and capable of handling the load of modern appliances. But it's not just about the utilities. The overall living conditions of the home are under scrutiny too. The FHA wants to ensure that the home is a safe environment to live in. This means that it should be structurally sound, with a solid foundation, no significant hazards inside or outside the house, and adequate drainage around the property to prevent water issues. These requirements are in place to protect you as the buyer. They ensure that you're investing in a property that's not only valuable but also safe and durable. It's about peace of mind, knowing that your new home meets a set of standards that are in your best interest. FHA loans have some pretty flexible and beneficial features, especially if you're venturing into the home buying process. Let's break it down into bite-sized pieces so it's easier to digest. First off, FHA loans are pretty inclusive. They're not just for first-time home buyers. That's a common misconception. Whether it's your first or fourth home, as long as you plan to make the property your primary residence, you can tap into the benefits of an FHA loan. This opens up opportunities for a wide range of buyers, from those stepping into their first home to others looking to downsize or relocate. Next, let's talk about refinancing. The FHA doesn't just stop at helping you buy a home, they also offer options to refinance your mortgage. 
This includes special refinance loans and even cash-out refinance options, which can be a game-changer if you're looking to consolidate debt or need cash for home improvements. It's about giving you flexibility with your mortgage as your financial needs or the market changes. Lastly, the down payment situation with FHA loans is incredibly accommodating. Coming up with a down payment can be one of the biggest hurdles in buying a home. The FHA eases this by allowing the entire down payment to be gifted. Yes, you heard that right. The whole down payment can come from an eligible source, like family members, your employer, charitable organizations, or even certain government programs. This feature can make the leap into homeownership that much more attainable for many people. So, in essence, FHA loans are designed with the borrower's needs in mind, from the inclusivity of the loan's purpose to the flexibility in refinancing and the generosity of down payment sources. When you're weighing the options between an FHA loan and a conventional loan, it really comes down to what fits your situation best. Here's the deal in simpler terms, FHA loans are kind of like the welcoming committee of home loans. They're more accessible, especially if your credit isn't sparkling or your debt-to-income ratio is on the higher side. Plus, if you're a bit short on cash for the down payment, FHA loans have your back since you can use gift funds from family, employers, or even charitable organizations. This flexibility makes FHA loans particularly appealing to a wide range of buyers, not just those purchasing a home for the first time. Now, on the flip side, if you've got a strong credit score and can afford a higher down payment, you might want to glance over at conventional loans. Why? Mainly because of the potential savings on mortgage insurance. With conventional loans, if you can put down 20% or more, you can skip the mortgage insurance altogether, which could save you a nice chunk of change over the life of your loan. But here's a bit of advice, don't just jump into this without doing a bit of homework. Rates, terms, and requirements can vary a lot from lender to lender. So, it's a smart move to shop around, compare what's out there, and even get pre-approved. This not only helps you understand what you can afford, but also puts you in a stronger position when you're ready to make an offer on a house. For those diving into the home buying process, especially with an FHA loan, gathering all your financial docs early and considering pre-approval can really streamline things. And if you're looking to get into the nitty-gritty of FHA loan requirements or explore your options further, reaching out directly to FHA-approved lenders is a wise step. Also, checking out the official FHA website and reputable financial advice platforms can provide you with a wealth of information to make an informed decision. In essence, your journey to homeownership is a personal one, and choosing between an FHA and a conventional loan depends on your individual financial situation, your future plans, and what you qualify for. Take your time, do your research, and consider what will work best for you in the long run.